Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're going to do this one in the car today. Um, here in eastern Canada, uh, we've been going through uh, some power failures here. We had a storm roll through, very, very windy storm roll through here on Saturday. And as of Saturday at around 5 p.m., there's been no power here. So we are currently on day four. Four, a little further than halfway through four solid days of having no power and I have generator running and it's just noisy and the lighting in the house is uh, garbage so this is the best place I can figure uh, to do this kind of thing today there's a lot to go over uh, I'm gonna steer away from Canadian politics uh, and what's going on in Canada uh, for this video, uh, but uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, first up, North Korea fires three missiles just as Joe Biden ends his trip to Asia. One of these missiles uh, is thought to be North Korea's most powerful ICBM. Of course, in response, the US and South Korea jointly held some live fire exercises as a response. So that's obviously going to ramp things up uh, over in the Koreas. Uh, just more wonderful news to look forward to as to what's going on in the world in respect to a possible uh, lead up to a third world war. Uh, China is also in the news. Uh, they've deployed robotic soldiers along the border with India. The machines are able to transport supplies and can be fitted with light machine guns and can be operated remotely. So, China is now using robots to fight wars. Interesting. Uh, also, in regards to China, Joe Biden claimed the U.S. is committed to using military action if China moves to take over Taiwan. Now, of course, as usual, after Biden opens his mouth and says something stupid, the White House later walked back those comments. However, the damage was already done. You heard about monkeypox? Well, the WHO, that ever-trustworthy organization... <laughs> sorry, I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, ...claims that the monkeypox outbreak is containable but they didn't release any details on what the containment strategy or measures would entail. That's also another interesting fact. That, oh, we can contain it, but we, uh, we're not going to tell you how just as of yet. I can't wait to see what they come up with for that. Uh, globally, things are getting really bad. As Sri Lanka has now run out of fuel as their economy tanks. The government is out of money to purchase fuel. Government also suspended sovereign debt payments. Credit agencies, of course, are expected to place the country uh, in default. Uh, over to U.S. and Russia. The U.S. is blaming Russia uh, for the growing food crisis, claiming Russian military is blocking grain exports from the Ukraine. Of course, Russia is fired back, saying it's the U.S. sanctions that are responsible. Russia, by the way, currently produces just over 24% of the world's wheat. So, that's going to make an impact. Uh, we're going to start seeing some, some protests and stuff. Oh, wait a minute. No, we're already seeing those. Rising food prices are sparking protests on a global scale. Argentina, Iran... Several African countries, as well as Chile, Venezuela, Colombia, Uruguay, and Greece have all seen protests in response to rising food costs. Several African countries are seeing violent protests uh, over these rising food costs, uh, which are very soon going to lead to some severe shortages. Uh, just to skip back to Russia for a little while. Russia is also considering dropping the maximum age limit of 40 years to join the military. As it stands right now, you can't join for military service in Russia if you are 40 years of age or older. Russia now, for some reason, is considering scrapping that. Maybe they believe that there's a lot of middle-agers like me that want to go fight in a war... Uh, 
a possible upcoming war. I don't know. In any case, we can see things on a global scale happening here. It's not just what's going on in Canada, although that's important too. It's not just what's going on in certain regions uh, of the world. This is a global thing. It's in Europe, it's in Africa, it's in South America. North America is in turmoil. Uh, Europe, forget about it. Asia, going off the rails. Uh... Even Australia, I mean, there's not a lot of really horrible news coming out of Australia or anything freaky or anything like that, uh, but it is worth noting that Australia did just change their leadership, which shows that people are getting sick of the status quo and uh, basically standing up and voting out uh, who's been leading uh, for the past four or five years uh, it's looking like the world is looking for a change. Uh, keep in mind as all this happens that while our leaders do pretty much control what's going on in the world right now, uh, the people are starting to stand up and say, no, enough's enough. And as elections are coming up, uh, regime change is happening. So hopefully the world can... Uh, maybe rise up against what's been happening, uh, vote out the leaders that have been making all of this go from bad to worse, uh, and do it before uh, it's too late. I know here in Canada we got uh, at least another three years, more or less, uh, it seems like, of uh, liberal control. That may change. Uh, the NDP supporting the liberals, so that whole... Coalition, not coalition, may fall apart, uh, but as we're seeing now, uh, the Liberals are basically folding to whatever the NDP wants them to do in order to stay in power, uh, and of course, nothing's going to change until we change our government here, and nothing's going to change in the world until people start changing their governments across the world. In any case, I'll leave you with the uh, typical reminder. An informed Canadian is a prepared Canadian. Stay safe out there, folks. It's a tough world.